This is the end result. In this video I'll show you how to make a 10 cell battery pack using a BMS and a dedicated charger from an electric bike. In my previous video I compared three types of lithium-ion batteries from Panasonic, LG and Sanyo. Next I'll make 10 cell battery packs from each of them and use them on my electric longboard. We have already decided to make a 42 volt battery. The next question is what kind of format your battery pack should have. Depending on your purpose, how big can it be? because connecting more cells in parallel would give you more capacity which means most of the times you want as much batteries connected in parallel in order to have power for a longer time. My setup will be two 10 cell batteries connected in parallel as shown here which makes 10S 2P. First I glued the cells in pairs for the parallel connection and then I glued them all together in series. This way I can keep the positive and the negative ends close to each other for better layout. Next I connected the cells using a spot welder and nickel strip. Depending on your purpose, the nickel strip you use here should best be thick and broad in order to handle the high current, otherwise it could melt. If you plan on getting a spot welder, I would recommend getting one that has a loose welder which you can hold in your hand. That makes welding the batteries much easier. The nickel strip that I've used here is actually not good enough for the amounts of amps my e-board will be drawing. As a workaround, later I doubled the nickel strip. Like when gluing the cells, first I connect them in parallel and then in series. Measuring the pack well discharged shows the connection is correct. In order to charge the battery, I'm using a charger from an electric bike, which has a XLR plug. Because of that, I'll solder an XLR female plug to the battery. You should test your case by placing all the components and see how they would align. Just be careful not to create any short circuit on the battery. Next, I'll solder the lead cable to the battery while keeping in mind in what position it will end. I always apply hot glue on my lead cables because they seem very fragile. Then you want to cut the cables in order to have a minimum length of cabling. Here I decided to solder the negative on the lead cable to the negative on the output connection. But you should see for yourself in which order you want to connect the cables. Because you want to work safely and not cause any short circuit while working. If you want to know more about lead cables, then watch my video about this. Keep in mind that the negative cable for the BMS also needs to connect to this point, which I forgot at this moment and I had to resolder later. Thank you. 
Here I kept the soldering iron a few seconds too long and that caused small short circuit. Later I added hot glue below the nickel strip for isolation. When soldering keep it below a few seconds. You can also use extra isolation on each cell. Next I glued the lead cables in position and then soldered them in place. It's best to cover the batteries and cables, for example with tape, so that they don't cause short circuit. Otherwise you could easily damage the cells, which has happened to me. The nickel strip was overheated due to short circuit because I kept the soldering iron too long on the other side. But at least this way the connection was terminated quickly and the damage on the cell is limited. Next I soldered the lead cable to the battery. And again, if you don't know how to connect the lead cable, please watch my video on this subject. Link in the description. You can test whether all the cables are connected correctly by measuring the lead cable with a voltmeter. Each step should add around 3 to 4 volts depending on how much each cell is charged. By the way, when making the battery it's best to have all the cells at the same voltage. In my case I had just tested them and they were all discharged to around 3 volts. Next I connect the XLR plug. By measuring the charger you can determine which port is negative and which is positive. In my case and probably yours port 1 is positive and port 2 is negative. In order to shield the BMS from creating short circuit on battery, I wrap it with heat shrink. I've put a link in the description to different type of 10 cell BMS, including the one I'm using here. In a later video I'll explain more about BMS. One of the BMS cables caused a short circuit on the battery, because of which I had to replace that cell. The BMS that I'm using has separate cables for charging and discharging. The yellow one is for charging and the blue one is for output, in my case the motor. Here are the schematics for the connections. 
Because I didn't want to resolder the input and output cables directly on the battery, I decided to cut the existing cable and solder onto that. This battery pack charges in under 3 hours.